This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to an YouTube video. Today we have a very exciting and highly anticipated camera to take a look at, and that is the Canon EOS R5. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you've probably been expecting and very excited for this camera to be released. It's probably one of the most hyped up camera releases I've seen in a very long time. And for that reason alone, it's definitely warranted for me to want to go take a look and see what this camera can do. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on the internet already about this camera and how it overheats when it shoots video and, you know, it's kind of a disappointment in that regard. And while that may be true, I don't really see a lot of videos covering the still side of this camera and how that can be really beneficial to photographers. Now, this camera has a lot of really amazing features that are our first for Canon and Canon mirrorless cameras alike. And I want to kind of dive into that a little bit, explain to you guys why this might be a great option for you as a photographer, as well as show you guys some sample images over the next couple of days when I'm going to be testing this camera on a variety of different shoots. Now with this camera, I do have the Canon 28 to 70 F2 lens, which is probably like the best lens that I've ever shot on period. One of my favorite lenses, the ability to shoot at F2 all the way from 28 to 70 millimeters really gives you a really nice variety of angles and compositions that you can make. Now, with all that being said, I'm really excited to put this camera through its paces and see what it can do. I do think, however, that, you know, I want to say something first and foremost. A lot of people really just want this perfect camera to hit the market and exceed their expectations. But I think in the climate that we live in now, where every camera is pretty amazing, you're always gonna have something negative to say about everything that gets released. There's always something to complain about. There's always something that doesn't work perfectly and you're gonna just gonna focus on that as the audience. And I don't think that's the right way to look at this stuff. I really think we should look at this amazing piece of equipment for what it is and what it can do rather than what it can't. And that's what I hope to convey in this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Do like a 180? Yeah, flip. So face more that way? Yeah. So we are out here in Griffith Park in Los Angeles taking some portraits. And the main thing that I definitely noticed so far is going to be how snappy the autofocus is. Works perfectly, especially with this lens, it's nice and sharp always. And also the 45 megapixels definitely shines through, especially when you zoom in and you're able to crop and you know kind of mix up the image however you'd like. That extra resolution is definitely going to help with that. And it's something that I definitely welcome on a mirrorless body. Step more in the light right there for me. Yeah. Yeah. Face can you face me? So as I mentioned before, the lens that we are using on all of these shoots in the video is the Canon 28-70 to f2. This is an RF mount lens, probably my favorite lens that I've ever shot on, honestly. It's so tech sharp and it gives you a really nice wide range of focal lengths to choose from, all at f2 if you want that. It's a really nice bokeh all around and tack sharp, as I said. And you pair that with something like the R5, you know, you get really great results pretty much every single time. Uh, a little bit right there, yeah. Let's see. And yeah, put your hands back on your hips for me, face to face me though. Yep, right there for me. Hand up one more time. Yeah. This Ibis is super nice. I would say that like, I don't know if I've ever seen Ibis on a Canon 
body before. I don't think that's ever been a thing. I've noticed that on my Fuji, it's pretty incredible. And ever since then, you kind of get accustomed to it. It's something that you really want to have when you're shooting. And especially when you're shooting at slower shutter speeds or with a big lens like this, it's really nice to have that. It just keeps things nice and stable, especially for photos. It really allows you to not have to worry about the shutter speed as much. You know, you can shoot at 50th of a second. It's probably going to be just fine. And it also just stables out the entire image when you're zoomed in to something like 70 millimeters or even something longer like a 200 mil. It's going to really help with that as well. Yeah, it looks so cool. Looks like surprisingly like really nice though. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks good, right? You can look to the side too, you have to look right at me. Actually, we'll try this first, maybe we'll have you go behind there. Do that, like with your hand right there, but then look here. Yeah. Stop small, it was like no teeth. There you go. Yeah, then look that way again. Yeah. So far, I am very pleased with this camera. I don't have a lot to complain about. I will say the battery life definitely is not as good as the EOS R, for example, and I owned that camera for a while. I think that mostly just has to do with the fact that this camera just has a lot more features and therefore the battery is going to be, you know, draining at a higher rate, which is totally fine, you know. But I think, you know, the form factor, the, you know, ergonomics, that's something that Canon always nails with their cameras. And I really love how this camera feels as well, so. All right guys, so I just got back from my third and final photo shoot with the Canon EOS R5, and I wanted to give you guys kind of my final thoughts after utilizing this camera for the last couple days. I think a lot of people really wanted this camera and still want this camera to be the end-all be-all hybrid camera that you know people have been wanting for a very long time. And to me, I don't really think that this camera is necessarily that. What I think it actually is, is a photography camera first and foremost with some video capabilities added in. And to me, that's a pretty big distinction. You see, when you look at traditional cinema cameras or DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, I think we're just entering the golden age of what these cameras are going to be actually capable of doing. And this is the first camera to me where, you know, the specs are off the charts and it's farther along, in my opinion, than any other mirrorless camera that's currently out there. You know, obviously there is some caveats with the overheating issues and a few other things as well concerning the video specs. But for me, I really wanted to focus on the photography side of things and just show you guys what this camera is capable of. You can list off specs all day long, but at the end of the day, if the camera can't keep up with you, the camera isn't worth your time. And for me, I didn't find that actually to be true with the R5. I found that I was able to shoot the kinds of photos that I would normally shoot, and it got the job done surprisingly well. I think when you look at the R5 as a whole, there's a lot of really nice features that stand out. To me, the autofocus was really snappy and really easy to use. Paired with the up to 20 frames per second continuous shooting with the mechanical shutter is pretty amazing. You know, that's entering 1DX territory, which for me, you know, was kind of the end all be all for a while. I've been a Canon shooter for a long time, so this is definitely a pretty impressive camera to say the least on the photography side of things. I think Canon is just dipping their toes in terms of the video side with this camera, and I'm really excited to see what they do in the future. But again, on the photography side of things though with this camera, like I said, it is very, very nice. You know, you have 45 megapixels, you have in-body image stabilization, you have really beautiful Canon color science, and you have a great RF lens lineup that, you know, really complements this system well. Pair that with dual card slots, and you have a really nice complete package, honestly, that takes great, amazing photos you know but again at the end of the day if you don't have the artistic ability or the motivation to get better as an artist just buying that next piece of gear is really not going to help you take that next step necessarily you know in some cases that actually might but for me you know I see this camera and I'm able to create the same images that I've taken you know with any other kind of camera in previous years it has some cool features but again you don't need the newest and latest and greatest to make really amazing stuff this video hopefully will prove that to you guys because a lot of these images that I did take are pretty similar similar to photos I would typically take on any other kind of camera. I think we all get really excited and enamored by specs and you know rightfully so. It's a really exciting time to purchase cameras and be in the market for cameras and be you know creatives in general because we have such amazing pieces of equipment but there's really no bad camera anymore. All these cameras are so amazing and I think we've gotten to a point where we like to nitpick every single little thing that's wrong with each camera 
when in reality, this is an incredible camera that I'm filming on right now. And my experience with shooting photos with the camera over the last couple days has been exceptional. Honestly, this camera is really amazing and there are tons of other amazing camera options out there. So don't feel like you have to get the latest and greatest. The Canon EOS R5, yes, it's an incredible piece of machinery and I had a really, really fun time using the camera. But don't get stressed out that you can't, you know, afford the next latest and greatest piece of gear. Or even if you can, you probably don't need it, you know? Like, it's it's okay to just stick with what you got and focus on your creative and artistic abilities because that is so much more important down the road than buying that next piece of gear. Now, with all that being said, yes, the Canon EOS R5 is a pretty incredible photography camera and I really had a great time shooting with it. Let me know if you guys have any questions about the photography side of things down below. As I said, I didn't really test the video side as much. I am filming on it right now in 4K, which it seems to look pretty nice. But I think I would want to do more testing with the video down the road. So I could potentially rent an R5 again and do some video stuff. If you guys want to see that, let me know. I think some other people though on YouTube already have kind of covered that. That's kind of why I wanted to make this video because I haven't seen really a lot of people covering the photography side of this camera. But yeah, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much as always guys for watching and we will see you next week. Peace. Thanks again to our sponsor, which is Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are looking to create a custom website from scratch without all of the coding and hassles that come with it, Squarespace is by far the best choice out there to make a beautiful website. They have easy to use templates which make creating a beautiful theme that much easier, 24 seven customer support for all of your questions, and tons of design and layout options to really make your website stand out. With it now being 2020, I think it is the perfect time if you haven't already to make your own photography website to be able to display your work in a professional way. If you guys wanna check out the link in the description, you can receive 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thank you so much for watching guys as always, and we will see you in the next one.